Hello. In this class, you're going to be watching a lot of videos as part of your homework, and you'll be often doing it through Edpuzzle. So before even that, I just want to talk a little bit about my expectations when you are watching these videos as part of your homework. So the first thing is give the video your full attention. I know there's a part of you that says, oh, I don't really need to watch this, or I can kind of do something else at the same time. That's ultimately going to be counterproductive because you need to learn the material at some point. So why not just give it your full attention the first time around? And then you know, what do I understand? What don't I understand? Do I have questions to ask? If you just write it off as, oh, I'll just click through this, you're coming to class really not even knowing what's going on. So just give it your attention. Um, and... Also, if you pay close attention, it will be easier to answer the question prompts that I have embedded in the videos. Okay, another thing is I want you to pause often. I'm just trying to get everything in these videos. I go through things fast. It's not like class where there would be a lot of pauses for people to jot things down or answering questions. I'm really just trying to supply everything for you. So it's on your end to pause when you need to pause. Maybe you need to write something down. Maybe you didn't quite understand something and you want to think about it, or you want to rewind a little bit to hear it again. Maybe you want to read what I actually have in the text. Right? Even right now, what I'm saying is not the same words as what is typed, even though they're very similar. So just pausing to read what is in the, the text in addition to hearing what I have to say, that's going to give you extra reinforcement. So please pause. Um, and also, it's not a terrible idea to pause just to give yourself a little break. If you're giving the video your full attention, you probably don't want any stretches longer than like 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Strong focus only lasts so much. You know, watch for 10 minutes, and if you're still not done, pause, maybe do something else for a couple of minutes, then come back to it. You're gonna, you're, you will benefit that way. Take notes. These videos are supposed to be a substitute for a more traditional class where I present all the information in class, and then of course you would be taking notes. So some of you may want to use iPads, some of you may want to print these out on paper, but have your notes with you and go through your notes as I am going through your notes. Now, it is not your job to write down everything you see. Sometimes I'll be drawing rather elaborate diagrams or doing rather complicated calculations, and I might actually say, don't worry about copying this down. There are things that I just want you to see or just want you to read, but occasionally you may think, oh, this is really important. Patrick said something really important that's not quite in the text. Let me write it down, or let me underline something. Oh, here's a really important definition. Let me put an arrow on it. And then obviously when you're practicing problems, you want to write those down. And what I just said here is do the problems. Very often, I will pause in the video, right? I will say something like, all right, hit pause and do this problem. And then in the video, maybe five seconds later, I'll start talking again. On your end, you should be pausing for a minute, two minutes, however long it takes to do the problem and then go back to the video. Don't trick yourself. There is a temptation to say to yourself, you know, I'll just watch Patrick's solution. And if that makes sense to me, then I'm good to go. There is an enormous distinction between things that make sense and things that you can actually do. These are not the same level of understanding. Really keep that in mind. Uh, and then finally, I will be embedding, embedding questions in these videos. In order to get through the video, every so often a pop-up comes and you need to give an answer. Now, I'm not expecting correct answers. Sometimes I'm just asking for an idea if almost anything is correct. Sometimes I actually am curious, you know, do you have an answer? I'm not expecting correct answers, but I am expecting some evidence that you really thought about the questions, right? I want intelligent answers. So that means you really need to stop and think about the question. Maybe you need to stop and do a calculation. Maybe 
you're a little confused, which is okay. So you pause and you reread something or you rewind a little bit and watch something. Give yourself an opportunity to really engage. I'm putting in these questions in the hopes that it draws you in and keeps you focused. If it's just 20 minutes in a row of video, 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 it's so easy for your attention to drift away. I want these questions so that you are regularly engaging. They're not usually super hard, but they're my way of knowing you're really paying attention. Right? And if you really don't have an answer, that's okay. But re- put your finger on, why can't I answer this? Right? Is there an instruction you don't understand? Is there a vocabulary word you don't understand? Is it that maybe you did the first step of the problem and you hit a wall? You didn't know what to do next? If you can't get to the final answer, that's okay. But I want to make sure that you're actually answering with that. So if there's a prompt in, in, embedded and you don't have an answer, right? Don't just say, I don't know. Say, I don't understand this word in the instruction. Or I could do the first step and then I got something and I didn't know how to factor it. Or I forgot my trick, so I got the wrong answer. Right? Put your finger on what it is you, that caused problems for you. I will see these answers when I go through, but also bring these to class. This is your opportunity to realize where are you. These videos come super early in the learning process. I'm not expecting instant mastery, but I am expecting you to use some data. How do I do on the practice problems? Could I answer the questions? Use some data to give yourself an idea of where am I right now? If you just breeze through it, you will not have an accurate idea. And in fact, you may have an overinflated sense. It is very common that students just nod along and they're like, oh, this totally makes sense, totally makes sense. I don't need to do any practice. I don't need to study. And then they take a quiz and for the first time they need to do a problem on their own and they realize they don't actually know how to do it. They've just been nodding along and lying to themselves. Don't do that. All right, that's enough for this.